Hey, Shalom, check this out. Oh, who started this trend? But you got Drake painting his nails. You got Caleb Williams, the number one college football athlete. And they're also getting paid to do this. I mean, you have him doing this Dr. Pepper ad where he's clearly painting his nails. And now they're tapping into March Madness. It's the biggest month of basketball in the year. And Jared McCain, a college of basketball star for Duke, just announced an NIL deal where he signed with a beauty and nail polish brand. Watch this. I'm in the middle of painting my nails right now, and I just did this side white, and I'm going to do this side blue. And I thought I'd just talk to you guys a little bit about why Going to do blue as usual Just do some self-care time I think everybody should do some self-care for themselves For me, it's nail painting I'm sorry if that offends any of you guys My favorite nail polish to use though Is the Sally Hansen Thanks the Lord But yeah, um, yeah, that's it And uh, right off the bat I'm thinking of Isaiah chapter 3 and 9 um, You know, sodomy is practiced amongst um, you wicked Israelites, you know, they're heavily, they're heavy, they're, they're heavy into that. Uh, even back in the ancient world and even now today, they're heavy into sodomy. And that's why um, the Lord, he cursed them out through the prophets. And uh, that's what we're going to read. We're going to go into the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 3 and 9. Um, that's the first scripture that pops into my head. Now, um, before I get started, I just want to give all praises, glory, and honor due unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakaha, Kladash, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that do teach well and have taught me this truth. To you, I say Shalom, and Shalom to the hopeful elect. And this is Brother Gabari Allah coming back at you with another video slash lesson. Lord willing, this will be edifying. So uh, let's let's get started. Uh, let's go into Isaiah chapter three, verse nine, and it says. The show of their countenance does witness against them. That's right. So you can see the sodomy in their face. You can see what they're about. When you look at their countenance, you look at their visage, you look at their demeanor. You know they're about that lifestyle. And that's our people, especially in modern biblical times, in this day and age, they're about that. Uh, back then they were about it, but more so now. Okay, it's more prevalent now. And it's to the point where um, they don't they don't mind doing it to the point where they'll if they're getting a paycheck for it, like like these guys, you know, they're getting paid to do this, and they don't they don't think that's a that's a problem, right? They don't think that's a problem breaking the Lord's law and being a sodomite, an open sodomite, and getting paid for it. That that's what they've come to, right? So um, yeah. But we know that they're just wicked. Either way, whether you're getting paid or whether you're doing it for fun or, or whether you're just about that lifestyle, it's still wicked. And um, you're going to be judged for that. So it says here, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Yeah, that's right. They're no longer in the closet. They came out the closet. And they're openly gay, right? <laughs> Let me just say it like that. And they're happy about it. They don't care. They don't care what the Lord thinks, and they don't care what their people think. So uh, they're about it. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. That's right. So you rewarded evil unto yourselves. So the blood is going to be upon your own hands. And you're going to die a very gruesome death. That's why with that lifestyle, it comes, you, you, you experience many problems. You experience STDs, you experience HIV, the monster, and then you experience uh, mental problems, and then death, man. Right? Because there's demons to it, there's demons attached to that lifestyle. Man, your insurance goes up when they find out that you're a sodomite in certain cases, man. The reason why your insurance goes up is because the insurance company knows. That you're going to live a reckless lifestyle. You have a lot of problems. That's why your insurance is up. You can go check that out yourselves. All right. All right. So it says here, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. And they have. They have. They have. You know, the show of their counter does witness against them. And it's showing you well, what the scripture is telling you, that their minds are vain, full of vanity, which is wickedness. They are lewd. And they are very malicious. And, and, you know, these are the type of people, especially sodomites, um, they cannot cease from sin. Especially sodomites, man. They cannot cease from sin. Kind of reminds me of uh, 2 
Uh, Peter chapter 2, verse 14. Matter of fact, let me pull that up. Because our people, man, they cannot cease from sin. It's to the point now they're addicted to sinning. Especially, especially you, um, you guys are in, that are into that uh, alphabet lifestyle, man. You cannot cease from sinning. Now, let me get, let me pull that up. This is uh, 2 Peter's uh, chapter 2, verse uh, 14 here. And it says, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. Hey, uh, notice it says eyes full of adultery too. Um, I'm going to bring that out. A lot of our people, they like to commit adultery. You got a lot of the men out here sleeping with other men's wives. And you got these women, they're, they're sleeping sleeping around with all these men, and they're cheating on their husband, right? A lot of these women out here, especially of our nation, they have many husbands, and that's off. they are not supposed to be doing that, all right? That's very wicked in the sight of Yahweh Bashim El Shai. Now it says, having eyes full of adultery... And that cannot cease from sin. That's right. So they cannot cease from sinning. It's to the point now they're they're addicted. And that's all they know. And it's gotten to the point with our people. You know, if you're not sinning, you ain't winning. Right? If you're not sinning, you're not winning. That's how our people think. And it's just something to do. You know, that's just the way they live. Now it says here, beguiling unstable souls. Yeah, and they're very unstable, our people. Now, the scripture says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I believe that's in the book of James. You know, if you're unstable, right, if you're unstable, it just simply means you lack faith. Um, let me get that James 1. James 1. I think it's here, James 1 and, yeah, here we go, James 1 and 8. It says here, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So if you if you lack faith, you uh, don't believe in the Lord, especially if you doubt the Lord, you're going to be unstable, unstable in all things. That's our people. So they're unstable, man, which simply means they're double-minded. Okay? Lack in faith. And we, you can go in, into faith, you know, just go into uh uh, Hebrews the eleventh chapter. What does Hebrews the eleventh chapter say? The very beginning. You know, um, faith is the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And uh, a lot of our people, man, they won't believe any. They won't believe something until they can see it with their own two fleshly eyes, right? So, a person like that, man, is going to be very unstable. And that's our people. You know, they're carnal, and they're about the flesh, and it's about money and what I can see and what they can prove. Okay, that's all it's about. So this guy, man, you can see the wickedness in his face. And the other the other individuals that flash in the clip, you can see the wickedness in their face, man. So they're no longer hiding it. They're coming out and they're getting paid for being a, a sodomite. Right, so um, yeah, man, you can see the wickedness in their hearts when you look at their face. Full of sodomy, man. Wicked. Right, and you know it's to the point, man. When when you uh, when you declare your sin and you practice it, you know the Lord is is you know some sins, man. Like the Lord is is He can't wait to execute judgment. Okay, just like in the time of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, right? I believe that's found in uh, Genesis eighteen, and I think it's eighteen and uh, twenty. I think it, it talks about because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. And I believe it goes along the lines of how the sin was very grievous. And, you know, there are a lot of grievous sins that are done that that cry out for judgment. And, and sodomy is one of them. Matter of fact, let me pull that up. That's in uh, Genesis 18, I believe. Genesis 18. Let's get Genesis 18. 18 and 20. So it says here, And Yahweh said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before Yahweh. Oh, right? So, hey, man, um, the cry of Sodom is great. 
And you know, some sins and the sins of some sinners cry aloud to heaven for vengeance. And uh, that's what we're seeing. You know, the Lord wants to destroy this place. <laughs> right. Because, you know, these sins are grievous, man. Like, God damn, it's an eyesore. Remember, the scripture says, um, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom. He's looking at this place. He wants to destroy it. <laughs> There's been many times where the Lord, he wanted to destroy Israel too, especially Israel. For, for their wickedness, man, because it was so grievous, man, their sins. And um, this place, man, is going to go out with a big bang. That's why this place is going to be blown to smithereens. And, this, and the Bible talks about this. For all the wickedness that this place has done, especially America and especially our people, it destroy you. So, you know, um, the iniquity of Sodom was crying iniquity. <laughs> You know, it was so so very provoking that it even urged the Most High to want to punish that place. And um, the same is now in America, Canada, all over the world, where they where they sin and they go off and they do all this wickedness. The Lord can't wait to punish them. All right? So, um, yeah, just think of that. You know, and the people here are extremely wicked. The men of Sodom were extremely wicked, and they were sinners. Just like today, just like these men that you see on the screen, and it and you know it starts with your celebrities, but it trickles on down to the regular people. Man, these regular people walking up and down, man, they're they're sodomites and they're wicked. They're just as bad as Drake, right? And and really going beyond that, going into your rulers, the people that rule over uh, you in this society, they're wicked as hell. Matter of fact, let me get um, Genesis chapter thirteen. Verse 13, might as well pull that up, go into the Sodom and Gomorrah. You can find the accounts of Sodom in Genesis, the 13th chapter. You can find it in, I believe, Genesis 18 and 19. It goes into Sodom and Gomorrah. Anyways, uh, this is uh, Genesis chapter 13, verse 13. And it says, uh, But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before Yahweh Bashem Yosha exceedingly. Did you see that? Very wicked. And they were sinners, man. You know, what is sin? Sin is transgression of the law, breaking the royal law. So they didn't keep any of the commandments and the other 613 laws. They didn't care about that. And they were just wicked, very evil, very evil, <laughs> very evil. That was in their heart just to be evil and wicked. Right? You know, sometimes, you, you know, you fall short. But a man that falls short, he actually cares when he falls short, he's crying, he's repenting. He's saying, oh, Lord, please save me, you know, deliver me. You will set up a, a sin offering, a sacrifice. You will go on a fast. But these people, they're so wicked to the fact when they sin, they don't even care about it. And, and that's our people today. They don't even give a shit. They don't even give a shit, man. All right. Especially back then, too, when um, uh, the law, the laws of sacrifice were 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 permitted right um they they would just set up the sin the sin sacrifice and then they would go do their wickedness commit adultery murder somebody then come back to the altar and say oh lord forgive me <laughs> so they took uh, uh the sacrificial system for granted right but that that sacrificial system what was set up to give you something called remission of sins it was really to halt the spread of those sins from destroying you. Just like what they say in, in the in the medical world, you know, these doctors, they'll say that your cancer has gone into remission. What, is, what are they telling you? They're telling you, okay, your cancer has stopped spreading. It doesn't mean that the cancer is going to go away. It could come back. It has the potential to come back, but it has stopped. So now you need to, you, you need to uh, do your due diligence to make sure you do the right things to to not make to make sure that cancer doesn't come back. That's what the sin sacrifice the sacrificial was about. I'm sorry. That's what the sacrificial system was about. No, because you could you could go because you're in the flesh. You could always go off and fall short again. But that that remission that that um that sacrificial system was to halt. Halt uh, was to stop sin so it wouldn't spread and so it wouldn't destroy you, right? So it wouldn't take you over. 
So, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. You know, uh, um, the sacrificial system was, was really for remission of sins. It was really to stop sin from spreading and destroying you. But our people, they took that for granted. But anyways, um, let me move on. I want to go into uh, 1 Corinthians. I kind of rambled there. Let's go into uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I believe it's uh, 6 and 9. Um, where is it? I think it's 1 Corinthians 6 and... Yeah, 6 and 9, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I want. So it says here, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom. All right? So uh, everything that's listed here, these type of individuals, they will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And that's the kingdom that's just about to come in. That's Yahweh's kingdom. You're going to have to die on this side, and then you're going to have to come back in the reincarnation. So, uh, or in the spirit. You're going to have to come back through the elect. And so I just want to bring out effeminate, right? So, and that really means soft to the touch. When you break it down and you go into the Greek. Right, so let's uh, pull that up. And these men, they're soft to the touch. That's how they're acting. A man isn't supposed to act like that. Let's have some downtime, some me time, take care of myself and paint my nails. I'm going to go with the Duke Blue. <laughs> Not supposed to be like that. So this is uh, Malakos. And that's in the Greek, and it says soft, soft to the touch, metaphorically in a bad sense. Yeah, very bad. Effeminate, of a catamite, of a boy kept for homosexual relations with a man. What does catamite mean again? I forgot what that word means. Let's see if I can find it. Let's define it here. Catamite. Yeah, okay, same thing. A catamite, a boy kept for homosexual practices. And that's exactly uh, what they're doing. That's a homosexual practice. Because, you know, that, that goes back into uh, cross-dressing. I believe that's in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter, talks about that. So anyways, um, of a male who submits his body to unnatural lewdness of a male prostitute. And this is lewd, man, you know. That's a form of cross-dressing. Uh, you're not supposed to be doing that. So um, men like this, man, they're not going to make it, like I said earlier. And uh, we just read... Uh, the precept that went into that. Um, these men aren't going to make it, man. Okay. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. <laughs> so know this, guys. Okay. And that's what the scripture is telling you. Okay. And um, everything listed, that's that's how unrighteous people function. They're going to be effeminate. They're going to be adulterers. They're going to be abusers. Of themselves with mankind, right? They're going to be thieves, they're going to be covetous, and they're going to be double-minded, man. You know, these people aren't going to make it. Okay, so, yeah. Being effeminate is likened onto being a sodomite. Almost. Yeah, pretty much a, a, a sodomite, yes. Right, so, it is. It's likened. Okay, it's likened. Same thing. Okay, so anyways, um... Today... Anyways, <clears throat> so it's likened on to being a, a sodomite. All right, so now let me get, uh, let me get, let me get, I'm um, trying to remember what precept it is, man. Sorry, man, I'm kind of slowing down. I'm trying to figure out what precept to get next because I forgot it. It just came to my head. So I think it's Deuteronomy 22, yeah, because I just quoted it. <laughs> I'm kind of forgetful. It's a lock yet. All right, so this is uh, Deuteronomy uh, 22 and 5. Now, uh, this is the law, the laws on uh, cross-dressing. So this is uh, Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto Yahweh Bashem El Shai, thy power. So that's self-explanatory. So that means, you know, putting on panties. If you're a man, grown-ass man with a beard on your, sp your face and you're hairy, you shouldn't be wearing no panties, man. You shouldn't wear a skirt. And you shouldn't be painting your nails. And if you're a woman, man, that, that has breasts and you're able to bear children, you shouldn't be wearing a man's garment either. You shouldn't be putting on no army jackets. 
<laughs> right? Right? Wearing basketball jerseys and shit like that, man. Shouldn't be doing any of that. Lifting the weights, trying to challenge men in the gym. <laughs> you shouldn't be doing any of that stuff. Right? So wearing pants and all that stuff. Shouldn't be doing that. Getting buzz cuts, shaving all your hair off. Getting a sex change. No, you shouldn't be doing that. Shouldn't be doing that. All right. So anyways, man, I hope this was edifying. Until next time, just want to give all praises, glory, and honor to one too. Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Raka HaKadosh. And uh, the blondness of the apostles and elders of great Nelson of GMS to USA. Shalom and shalom to the hopeful elect. Shalom.